U.S. News & World Report is out with its list of the best high schools in America today, and High Technology High School in Lincroft made the top 10 nationally. Listed as the best in the Garden State, followed by the Biotechnology High School in Freehold, McNair Academic High School in Jersey City, the Academy for Allied Sciences in Scotch Plains, and the Bergen County Academies in Hackensack. And joining us now on the subject of education, a Seton Hall professor who was named by Education Week as one of the 17 next generation leaders to transform public education, Carolyn Satin Bajaj. It's good of you to join us. Your research has concentrated heavily on, on the immigrant experience in American schools. Uh, we are tempted to think that everybody in here is in the melting pot and things have gotten better. True or not? Well, it's a complicated story because the immigrants that come to the United States are as diverse as this country has always been. Uh, so some immigrants come from the most highly educated and high, high income families in their countries of origin. And many, uh, particularly from Mexico and different parts of Latin America, come from the least educated uh, segments of, of their society. So it's a daunting challenge because you have not only have the, the socioeconomic uh, disparity, but you also have the geographic distribution with, with how many different languages and how many different cultures to consider. Exactly, and and different educational experiences, different cultural uh, assets and, and values and ways uh, that people think about education. So schools are really faced with uh, a significant challenge, but also an opportunity because we have so much to learn and share and uh, with and from our immigrant uh, newcomers. Well, uh, in, well, in the old days, we thought, well, bilingual education. Well, it works if you have maybe you know, one culture, one language that you're dealing with. With so many, though, is there any kind of, you know, magical key that unlocks the door to getting to these students so that if they are a step below on the, on the rung of, of academic success, on the ladder of academic success, we can get them up there more quickly? Well, because bilingual education has been, become such a polarized issue, it has, has always been, um, but has been so wrapped up in the anti-immigrant anti rhetoric, I don't necessarily think that uh, education districts are able to, to approach and think about uh, how to educate uh, bilingual students uh, as innovatively as perhaps we would like them to, because the research really shows that bilingualism is an asset and there are cognitive benefits, mm -hmm. and that there are ways to approach, to successfully approach language learning for students uh, who, for whom English is not their first language, but we're not uh, there as a country to really embrace and, and support the, the best and perhaps most resource intensive uh, ways to, to, to promote bilingualism. Is there anything particularly unique within the state of New Jersey? in terms of success stories or failures or philosophies that stands out? Mm, in terms, the state of New Jersey, uh, I think, is like many other states looking to uh, move forward. And in, 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 in New Jersey, what, an interesting demographic trend is the growth, like in many other uh, states, of the Latino student population. So I think New Jersey is looking to other places like California and uh, Texas and New York that has received Latino immigrants and educated them uh, for more years. Uh, it's still a little little bit early to, to talk so about. It's a work in progress, uh, essentially. It is a work, like it is everywhere. And I think the new Common Core standards uh, might be a way for states to, to open conversations in a different way than they had uh, in the past. When I just, in the introduction, ran down the, the schools that made the, uh, the list for U.S. News & World Report, are those schools more likely to be more successful in dealing with immigrant students or not? So I'm dubious of any of these kinds of lists to mm -hmm. begin with, especially U.S. News and World Reports, because the metrics that they use mm -hmm. are not necessarily what other folks in, in education would say uh, reveal good education. Well, the college list has been subject to an awful lot of scrutiny exactly, lately as well. Exactly, exactly. So uh, one but, question is, uh, how far do they move their students forward? Do all the students coming in, do they do a really rigorous screening process so that they're starting with the highest achieving students to begin with? Um, or do they take uh, English language learners or SIFE students with interrupted mm -hmm. formal education, uh, which is a group of, of often immigrant students, and do they show real progress in, in moving their, their academic proficiency forward? And if, if so, then I would say, yeah, those are, those are great examples of how schools might think about successfully educating immigrant uh, origin youth. Uh, if not, if they take the same students uh, who come in at high proficiency and they end at the, sa at the same, then uh, they're not really doing anything that we th should think about replicating because they're not serving the, the, the hardest to, to, to serve students. Uh, so many challenges and so little time, unfortunately. Let's, let's continue this conversation because uh, obviously the future of this country 
very much depends upon the success of these kids. That's true. Thank you for coming on Thank in. you so much for having me.